Welcome back to this video on Google Classroom. So previously, we've looked at the overall structure of Classroom, we've looked at the overall structure of a particular class, we've talked about the About tab and the Students tab. So today we'll talk about the Stream tab, which is where you do a lot of your work. Let's start with the blocks at the left. The first block shows work that's due soon. So any assignments that you've given a date to that will be due in the near future will appear over here. Or you can use the view all option and see any work that's due at all. Underneath is a stream option to show deleted items. So if you created something and later deleted it, turning this on will show you the item that was deleted. And this is something that will be available to any teachers in the class, but not to students. Now the bulk of your work will be done through the plus sign in the lower right corner. Mousing over it shows you you have four options. From bottom to top, they are create an announcement. An announcement is simply information you're providing to the student that's not going to be graded. So an announcement differs from an assignment in the fact that they have to read it maybe, but don't have to do anything with it in the way of submitting an assignment. The second option is an assignment, and the difference is this is something you're asking them to do will most likely be graded, but something they have to participate in and send you back work in some form. Third option is to create a question, and this is a single question. You can create a quiz and put it in here through Google Forms, but that's not what's happening right here. You can simply create a question in one of two formats and have students answer it. And the last is to reuse a post. So perhaps something that I've done previously, a question, an assignment, an announcement, and maybe I want to add that to another class. I forgot to put it in another class or I realized that this would be useful in another environment. And instead of recreating it, I can simply reuse it. So let's start by looking at announcements. Clicking on the icon brings up the screen. You can see that the post is going to be in demo class because that's where I am now. But at this point, if I want to make that announcement available, to other classes, I can do it simply by selecting the other classes. Then when I post it, it will go to both simultaneously. So that's a work saver. This is where you would type your announcement. Um, let's just make this in fairly good weather. Okay, now I can assign a topic to this, and I've created a couple of topics. One would be general reminders, and two would be student forum. And I'm just going to pick general reminders. If I didn't have any topics here, that would be fine, because I do have a create topic button, where I can simply type the one that I want. So I'm not going to do that, because I already have a couple, and I'm just going to say general reminders. Now, Google Classroom is a simple tool. There's a limited number of options available to you, but they're generally very powerful options. And I think that's one of the um, big pluses of Google Classroom is it's very quick and easy to use, and yet you can do a lot with it. And the reason is that basically you can post or link to anything you can get on the Internet. So you can use the attachments option here simply to upload something to your Google space and then it will become available. Anything you create in Drive is available. YouTube videos or hyperlinks. So something that maybe doesn't exist in the Google space. Maybe it's another website. Maybe it's another space where you have things stored on the internet, a Dropbox or 
or another website that you've created or anything else. So anything you can get to the internet can be used as part of this. And that's what makes it so powerful. So let's look at these options briefly. We've looked at these previously in the tutorial about it, the About tab, frankly, but we'll, we'll review them briefly. Clicking on Attachments simply allows you to select files from your computer. So it's going to bring me here, in my case, to the desktop, but it might drop you anywhere, and you can use your menus to navigate around, select your files, open them, they will upload to Google Drive, and they will be attached. You have other options across the top. If you go to Recent, it's going to show you what you've done recently in your Google Drive space. This will just bring you to the top level of your Google Drive space and allow you to navigate. So it will be very easy. You can just come into here and, and pick something from there. Or things that you've starred in that space, in that Google Drive space. So uploading allows you to interact with your computer. The rest of these are really focused on your Google Drive space. The second option should look a little redundant, actually, because it's the exact same screen. It simply enters you on the recent option of your Google Drive space. So it's the same thing. I could even switch back here to upload, and now I'm going to get something from my computer. There's a third option. It lets you link to a YouTube video, and you can search YouTube here. Or you can have previously searched YouTube and simply post the link right in here. So let's go back to searching education, technology, inspiration. I don't know if we're going to find anything, but let's see. Robot education through inspiration. If I click on it, It'll give me a chance to preview right here before I select. And let's say that I love this. So I'll simply add it. Otherwise, I can cancel. And the last thing is the hyperlink option. So if I simply have a website that's not really associated with YouTube or my Google space, and uh, Google does own YouTube, and has for a little while now, so it's very closely related. But if it's something outside of that environment, I want to give them some inspirational quotes. Perhaps they're by Brainy Quote, which doesn't is not affiliated with Google to the best of my knowledge. I can simply copy that link, come back to links, Paste it here. There. Now I'm giving them a post. So it's nothing they have to do except read and make note of. It's got the text of the reminder here, or the text of the announcement here. It's filed under a topic, and I've included a video and a link. And there it is. That's an announcement. Okay, now let's look at an assignment. Clicking this second option, the clipboard option, brings you to the assignment tab. And you're going to notice it looks extremely similar to an announcement. The two differences are that it's got an optional instruction section that you can add more specific information. And it's got a due date. Everything else is exactly the same. You can give it a topic. You can put it in multiple classes at the same time you can attach or link to a series of things through the same options at the bottom. So to save some time, I've pre-filled the form. So I've given it a title of current events. You can see it's now posted to two classes, so I did check a second class in there. I gave them directions telling them that I've attached guiding questions here and that they can find the rubric in the About section. 
and these option this option over here is very important this tells me that students can view the file so that's appropriate here because these are guiding questions and I don't want them to change them however if I was giving them something um, say starter sentences that I wanted them to continue as part of their assignment I would change this to make a copy for each student so these three options are very important here students can only view what I've shared with them here they can edit but it's a single file so that if I send this out everybody is editing the same file and this will make a copy for each student at the time that they open it so when they open the actual assignment it will create a copy in their Google Drive and it will be shared with me and I'll have instant access to it so I am just going to assign this now And you can see that it tells me there are six people in my class and none of them have completed the assignment and gives me the other information. Students will see a slightly different view of this. I can also add a class comment down here if I'd like. And if I've allowed students to respond here under the students section, students can post and comment, then a discussion can ensue down here underneath the actual assignment. Now let's go ahead and create a question. Now, a question only comes in two types, a short answer or a multiple choice. So let me quick go in there and give some options for make it a multiple choice and give some options. There's an optional place for further instructions. I'm going to choose not to use that. I'm going to put a due date in there. Let's just make it the 30th. I won't bother with a due, uh, due time. This option allows students to see a summary of how other students have responded. If I don't want that, I can shut it off. I'll slide this down. I have my typical options of attaching things if that's appropriate for the question. And I will ask the question. And there it is. Now I'd like to look at the last option, the reuse post option. It's showing me the assignments in my class. It may bring me to this screen initially, and this is showing me all my classes. So it's nice. I can take an assignment out of one class and use it in another. But for right now, we'll go back into demo class. I'm going to take this current events because this is something maybe that I do every two weeks. If I want copies of attachments to be made, and this is probably most useful, when I am either giving them an attachment I hope that they'll respond to directly where I'm giving them each an individual copy or if I'm moving from class to class it's I find it easier just to have the duplicate copy in each class generally I don't like duplicates but it makes for less confusion I'm gonna say it's the current events option I'm not gonna make a copy and I'm gonna say reuse notice I have to pick a new due date and since I do this every two weeks, I'm going to say instead of the second, it's going to be on the 16th. I believe I said um, 11 p.m. So keep it consistent. Um, the file is already attached, which is great. I've already made my reference, which is great. This time, instead of posting it, I'm going to schedule it. So I really don't want this to be live to them. I don't want them to see a year's worth of current event assignments. That might be overwhelming. So since the one was due on the second I will simply have this one posted on the third at 8 in the morning notice that when you do that I don't get the typical three dot option for making edits I get an X to delete it or if I click anywhere on it I can make my revisions there and that concludes our coverage of the student stream tab and the four types of, of options that you have when working in here. And in our final video, we'll take a look at things from a student view, how it actually works.